What's going on everybody? How you doing? In today's video, we are checking out another Queen interview. This is a backstage interview before Live Aid, oh. which was a super huge famous concert of theirs, right? That they that they played at. Okay. Huge. Huge. So this is an interview before they hit the stage. We're going to check it out. If you're new here, please subscribe. Check out my videos on all kinds of videos, music videos, stuff like that. Check it out. We do donation requests. So if there's something you want us to listen to, watch, talk about, hit us direct, all that info is in the description below. Thank you, guys. All right, let's do this. Queen, bam. It was actually the BPI Awards that uh, we went to collect an award, and Geldof was at a few tables away and came over and said, how about doing this, this thing? And he said, we're going to have this and this and this and this. And we said, oh, yeah, I'm sure, you know, thinking that it was an almost impossible thing to get together. But we said, yeah, we'd be interested. And then a bit later on, he rang up and said, look, Brian, uh, I have to have a commitment, you know. Mm. And so we sort of talked about it a bit more. And uh, it seemed like we were all very keen to do it, you know. Is that because you support the cause and want to do your bit or because it's such a unique rock event that you can't afford to miss out in a way? It's a Good, bit, question. Yeah, Good question. Good question. To answer that, honestly, it's a bit of both, actually, because I think um, it is a very good cause, and uh, initially I think we, we would have liked to have um, taken part in Band-Aid um, single, but I, I think we were in separate parts of the globe. And uh, so the second um, bash at it was, was this thing, and also the fact that some of the biggest and best-known groups around the world are taking part, why not us? So I think uh, it makes me personally proud to sort of be part of it, actually. Is it difficult to choose numbers for a 20-minute set? Do you find that you have to stick to your best-known numbers? Yes, we've just been talking about that. It's pretty hard to make the choice. It yes, you don't really concise. know quite, quite what to do, you know, whether to play the hits or, mm. or to try and do something new. But I think in 20 minutes, really, we've got to play things that people know and will recognise, you know, in, in Turkey or wherever they're watching, maybe. Mm. Hang Hopefully. Hang <laughs> so we're still squabbling over that fact. That's what he's trying to say, yeah. You're known for the spectacle of your live performances, for the backdrops and the expansive lighting rigs. Is it going to be difficult to cope with the, the sort of sparsity of Wembley? Uh, well, it all comes down to if you can play or not, really, which mm -hmm. is nice, really, mm -hmm. <laughs> in a way, because I think probably there's probably an element of people who think that groups like us can't do it without right. the uh, mm -hmm. extravagant Huge. backdrops. But uh, we'll see, you know. Yeah. <laughs> wow. After 13 years, do you still get excited about this Dude, sort of like, live performance? Up. This one especially, yes. It's great, yes. yes. We still like to play and fool around. And what about the number that uh, you two are going to be performing towards the end, towards the finale? What, what's the story behind that? Well, actually, it seems that um, it, it looks as if we actually wrote it for this occasion, but we didn't, actually. It was, it was done a long time before that. It seems to fit the bill, actually. So I think um, they opted out and said, well, why don't the two of us... Because, I mean, during a Queen show, it's just the two of us that actually play, and Roger and John actually go and have a drink or something. But uh, so, so we weren't really going to do that one, but it seems to be um, very sort of a part of the show. It's very meaningful, and um, so we're going to do it. Tell me a little bit about it. Oh, you tell me. Oh. Um, it came about when we'd almost finished recording the album The Works, actually, and we'd been throwing stuff off because there wasn't room for it, and in the end we threw off so much that... Um, we said, there's a little hole here, it just needs something. And actually, Mac, who was producing us, um, said, well, why don't you do something really simple? You know, just, just write a song. And Freddie and I were there <coughs> late one night, and we, we just came up with this thing. It was very quick. And we just had this particular thing in mind, you know, that the whole business of Africa was in our minds. And uh, that's the way it came out. Saturday is meant to be all for a good cause, and there aren't meant to be any egos involved. But oh, are so no egos at all, no. But are so many superstars going to find it difficult in each other's sort of personal spaces? <laughs> Complete, totally impossible. It's going to be hilarious, it's be actually. Chaos. I think it's going to be chaotic, yes, yes. It has to be. I mean, we're not, we're not all wonderfully um, well-behaved kids, are we? It was just, but that, that's, that's going to sort of actually be the nice part of it, actually. there would be lots of friction and, and um, we're all going to try and outdo each other, I guess. And uh, but we're just going to go there and play. That's right. I mean, you want to give something special, really, because that's what it's about, you know, not the regular thing. So everybody's going to be out there giving their best, and that's what it's about. Make some money for those people. That's, as Geldof says, that's what it comes down to, you know. We can all have a great time, and I think we will, but it comes down to the fact that it's going to make tons of money. And for a change, the money's going to go to the right place. Cool. All right. 
Okay. I feel like this was like a little bit more of a boring interview mm. than the past ones. Yeah. But this look is my favorite look on Freddy. I like him with the short hair and his little tank tops. <laughs> you know? And the mustache. Yeah, I do. I like that on him. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, the only person who has the same hair is the... Who's the guitar player? The curly hair guy. Yeah, the guitar player, Brian. Yeah, everyone else has kind of changed their hair. Oh my gosh, he still has it there. (laughs) He's like way older. (laughs) Wow, we... Yeah, he's like, he's like a, uh, he like made the guitar that he, he, he's like, he's like a, let's see. I don't remember what exactly is, so I have to get it right. Yeah, an astrophysicist. What does that mean? What's an astrophysicist? He studies asteroids or something. Scientific career. Studied physics and mathematics. Uh, Graduated degree in physics. 1970 to 74, he studied for a PhD. um, Studying reflected light from interplanetary dust and the velocity of dust in the plane of the solar system. That sounds like a waste of time to learn. (laughs) Damn. When Queen began to have international success in 74, he abandoned his doctoral studies, but nonetheless co-authored two peer-reviewed research papers. Huge. In uh, October 2006, May re-registered for his doctorate, and he submitted his thesis. Wow, that's incredible. He did not need to do that, and he did. As well as writing up the previous work he had done, May had to review the work on zodiacal zodiacal dust undertaken during the intervening <laughs> 33 so years made up. which included the discovery of the zodiacal dust zodiacal dust by nasa's iris satellite after a viva voce the revised thesis was approved in 2007 some 37 years after it had been commenced he was able to submit his thesis well wow. okay so appointed a visiting researcher in Imperial College and continues his interest in astronomy and involvement with the Imperial Astrophysics Group. Wow. What does that do for anybody who just likes to... He co-founded Asteroid Day? He's just studying space dust. Yeah. (laughs) Some people like that. Around the world come together to learn about asteroids and what we can do to protect our planet from asteroids. (laughs) Hey, they got the dinosaurs. (laughs) Okay, so interesting. He was knighted. Yeah, he was knighted. Wow. Yeah. Wild. Yeah, he and he like made his guitar, right? Where is that? Guitar stock equipment? Uh, Guitars. Can I see this? Because he did, right? He he like made his guitar. Most of May's electric guitar work live and in the studio is done on the Red Special, which is like his guitar that... Brian May guitar, which he built with his father, an electronics engineer, when he was 16. It was built with wood from an 18th century fireplace. It was composed of household items such as mother of pearl buttons, shelf edging, and motorbike valve springs. While May and his father were building the Red Special, May also produced plans to build a second guitar. However, the Red Special was so successful that May did not need to build another guitar. Wow. What happened? Look, it says he said, I like a big neck, thick, flat, and wide. Uh huh. It just yeah. sounds funny. Okay. These plants were eventually given to guitar luthier Andrew Guyton in around uh, 24, 2004, 2005. Guyton made some slight modifications and the guitar was built. Why would you do that? <laughs> it was named to the spade as the body's shape resembled the form shown on playing cards. However, the guitar also came to be known as the guitar that time forgot. I like a big neck, thick, flat, and wide. I I like lacquered the fingerboard with Rustin's plastic coating. Weird. The tremolo is interesting in that the arms made from an old bicycle saddle carrier, bag carrier. The knob at the ends of the knitting needle and the springs are valve springs from an old motorbike. In addition to using his homemade guitar, he prefers to use coins Instead of a more traditional, oh, wow, he uses coins instead of a pick. Oh. Because he feels their rigidity gives him more control in playing. He is known to carry coins in his pocket specifically for this purpose. Wow. Hmm. Wow. Crazy. Yeah, I knew that he built that thing. I didn't know that he built it with his dad when he was 16. With knitting needles. With all kinds of... Random. 
Yeah, household business. Yeah. Interesting. Cool. Well, yeah. <laughs> Queen. Yeah, this is a pretty um, classic concert. I don't know if we've seen, if I've shown you any of the performances. I feel like we have one. seen one. One? Because I possible. recognize the outfit. Okay. It's possible that we may have seen one. It's possible. Yeah, it was a really big concert. Really big, famous concert. So, very cool. All right. Wow. Thank you, guys. We'll catch you in the next video. Bye.